Hi everyone. I'm just logging in, but it looks like we're already live. And I'm a tiny weeny bit early. So I just open this on my computer. Okay, there we are. Uh, okay. Wow, that went through really fast. So while I just wait for a couple of people to arrive, um, I received my new catalogues a couple of days ago. The mini catalogue for January to June. It's a it's a little bit bashed up, um, but uh, not to worry. The the inside's still good, and the celebration catalogue. If you don't have a demonstrator that you work with, and you're in Canada and you would like to see a catalogue, um, just drop me a message and I can certainly send you one. I do have orders going in tomorrow, ready for the new catalogues. Tomorrow is the first day demonstrators can actually order them to give out to customers and um, teammates and things. So if you would like a catalogue, let me know and uh, I will get one in the mail to you. I'm allowed to show you the front and the back, I think. I know I'm allowed to show you the front, but uh, it's, it's quite a thick catalogue. Lots of nice things in for occasions that happen between January and June. So if you think about what occasions are going to be happening, you'll find stamps and things in for that. And the celebration is, look, if, if you look down here, shh, don't tell anybody, but you can have a little sneak peek at some of the things. And this, of course, is a big sneak peek for one of the things inside. But this is just for January and February. And for every $60 you order in goods, either from the mini catalogue, the clearance shelves, the annual catalogue, um, for kits, anything that you order for $60, you can get one item from here. And usually it's things like paper, um, stamps, sometimes it's been a stamp set and paper together, sometimes it will be, um, oh well, I've known in the past where it was sequins and twine, so there's lots of different things that you can order and uh, it's always good for free. I actually order my paper pumpkin when it's celebration because if you get paper pumpkin normally and you buy a code, you have to pay shipping on it. Um, so what I do is I buy maybe a six month code or a three month code because then that gives you the opportunity to get your paper pumpkin and also to get celebration items. So you get the best little, um, little offerings for your money if you do it that way. Okay, and let me just move that out of the way and let's show you what we're going to make today. So we're going to make um, a pinwheel tower card. It's not anything new. You, you might have seen other demonstrators making them. I found one on Pinterest that I really liked and I thought I would have a go at it. Some people use different sizings to the ones I'm going to show you, but I wanted it to fit in a normal size envelope. Some of the ones that you will see, um, just be a little bit careful because they don't fit in the medium envelopes. You need a larger envelope, like one of the memories and more pack envelopes. But I wanted mine to be able to go just in an, a regular envelope. So that's why I'm doing these sizes. And this one was just my prototype. And you can probably get the idea. You would have patterned paper here and here. And as you open it, each page is sort of different. And then you just fold it. You can have it on the mantelpiece set up you know, or on the side. And then you just fold it down to go in the envelope. So I'm going to use um, my Sweet as a Peach stamp set and my You're a Peach paper, which goes with this set. And this is in the annual catalogue. It's an annual item. And I've got a collection of inks out. I've got Balmy Blue, Old Olive, Calypso Coral and Pale Papaya. 
and you might have seen my very first Facebook Live, I used this exact sweet and I showed you how to make the little peaches with two-tone colours and I'll be doing that again tonight because once I'd seen those peaches with two colours on, I didn't want to go back to just a one colour peach. <laughs> so mine are going to be in two colours as well. So let's make the base piece first. Now this is the base piece and you actually make the inside tower on its own and then you attach these pieces of card. And I did see a tip from one of the demonstrators who said that if this was a too bulky, now it does fit perfectly in an envelope, but if you found it too bulky, instead of making the tower on the inside with card, you could use a thick designer series paper. So it wouldn't be quite as rigid. Um, don't use the Whisper White thick cardstock. I did my first um, attempt with that and it was a bit too thick and it stuck out quite a lot and I found that the mechanism didn't just open and close as easily as this. So don't use card that's too thick. But I've got, oops, just dropped those. I've got a piece of pale papaya. I've got some balmy blue, which is a, the color I'm thinking I will use. And I've got Calypso coral. And what I need to do really is to choose my paper and then see. So all of these colors go with the paper. Um, the paper is made up of balmy blue, bumblebee, calypso coral, early espresso, mango melody and pale papaya. So you can't go wrong with any of those colors. And I have all of my paper actually already chopped. Um, these are chopped into card base, uh, card fronts, just the perfect size for card fronts. And I'm thinking that really I want to use the blues. So I'm, I'm going to put away the other colours. I know I'm not going to use those, so let's pop those on one side. Oops. And let's move that one. And I know that, let's see, I'm going to use, I got these out earlier and I, I wasn't sure if I was going to use these ones, but I am. So I've got two pieces out with this large peach on. I've got a piece of the flowery one that has the little blue flowers as well as the pale papaya and the calypso coral ones. And I've got a couple of pieces with these stripes on that have got flowers on the back. So I probably need more pieces, but these are the ones I'm going to start with. And I'm going to cut all of my paper first. So let's, let's put some sizings up here for you so you can see what it is I'm cutting. Okay. Now I don't have comments coming through on my um, computer at the moment. I know there are people watching if you've sent a comment, I can't see it at the moment, but um, please know that I know you're watching, so thank you. Okay. So I'm going to cut my um, DSP and you need to have four pieces all together. But for two of the sides, I don't want to use DSP. I want to use a little scalloped rectangle instead. So just I want to have a space to write on. So I'm doing that and I'm only cutting two pieces of DSP and they're cut at four by two and a half. And this is a four inch piece. So I'm going to just cut, oh, I'm going to, I want that side of it to be on the um, card. So I'm just going to cut this down at two and a half. Okay. So this, oh, what did I do there? This measures uh, two and a half, yep, yeah, and I want it to be four. So let's cut that down to four. Okay, I'm going to save these little pieces for in my box. And then you can see that these fit just onto these little, these little panels here. So you, you end up with paper, like a design series paper, on every one. But because I want to have those little pieces to write, 
these ones will just be on here. And that's why I'm only cutting two of these pieces. Uh, but I'm going to cut them both the same, so I'm going to cut it down to four inches. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just going to cut it at two and a half. I beg your pardon. So that I can leave the other piece longer. Because I can, I can find more things to use it on if I have this longer piece. And then I'll cut it down to four. So here's my two pieces cut at, uh, oh, Laurie, um, I'm just going to reply to Laurie. Um, she can't find me live, so just reminding her where I am. Sorry, everyone. Okay. Hey. Hi Libby. Oh, that's okay. It's nice to see you. Thanks for joining me, Libby. Um, Laurie's having trouble connecting as well. So I don't know if it's the impe impending storm that we're getting and uh, connections aren't so good. But but I am here. So um, There we go. Okay, so I've got, I don't know if you saw Libby, I've got a little pinwheel tower card that we're making. I haven't started to make it yet. All I'm doing is cutting my little pieces of design series paper. And I'm cutting two pieces at four by two and a half. So I've got two pieces already cut. And now I want four pieces uh, at four inches by one and a half. And I'm hoping that these, oh, they are just perfect. So I want this stripey one on the couple. So I'm saving all the little scraps. This, this one, one and a half as well. Yep, okay. Now let's cut that down to four. And I do need two more pieces for this. So let's see, I might be able to use these ones. Yeah, we could. We could use these little pieces that we've just chopped off. So let's make that down to four. Um, oh, I tell you what, let's move, use these. Because I do like this one. I think this is really pretty. So I'm going to cut these at one and a half. And one and a half. How's your day going, Libby? Is your little granddaughter feeling better now? Okay, we'll chop this at four. And at four again. Okay, right, I'm gonna move all of these scraps out of the way so I don't end up sticking those in by mistake. And I'll go back through the pieces I have before we put the card. Oh, <laughs> that's good to hear, Libby. So I've got two pieces of designer series paper cut at four inches by two and a half. And I've got two of my little white scallops. If you don't want to use these, you can use more designer series paper for the same size. Um, and that, that would work as well. Just, I wanted somewhere to write my sentiment. I did, I loved that video, Libby, thank you. And I've used the third one in of the colour and contour scallops. You see, so you've got the scallop and you've got that little cut edge. If you don't have this set, you can use the Stitch So Sweetly ones. And let's see, that one's a bit small. Yeah, that one would work. So just find one that you feel would fit sort of onto here, just like this. Okay. And if you don't have any of these and you want a white piece, just cut a piece of basic white card at four by two and a half, and that would work as well. Oh, nice Libby. You're gonna be busy at work. Okay, so we've got those. And then I've got four pieces. Let's write it down here. Four pieces. Uh, four by one and a half. And I've got two different designs. 
Okay, but you could keep them all the same if you wanted. Right, so I'm going to pop those right over there. And let's make the mechanism part that's going to go in. So I've got my full size piece of balmy blue, but I only actually need a piece that's four and a quarter by four and a quarter. So I'm just going to cut it right down the middle. And that is a normal card base. So I'm going to keep that, put it on one side for another card. So we've got this at four and a quarter. I'm just going to turn it round and cut it at four and a quarter. So we've got a nice, even little square here. Okay, and this is scrap at the moment, but I probably use it for a layer on a card somewhere. But actually, we'll need it for the panels. So, okay, now you need to score this at one inch, two inch, three inch, and four inch. So I'm just gonna put it in my trimmer, and I'm gonna use the score blade. If you don't have a score blade kind of a trimmer, just put it on um, like your scoring tool. And if you don't have that, let me just finish doing this. One inch, two inch, three inch, and four inch. Leaves you a tiny, tiny little one quarter inch here. But if you don't have any of those, you could use a ruler, um, let me just see, I haven't, I haven't got mine in front of me, but you could use a ruler and a bone folder. So if, if you pretend this is a ruler, you can put this down on your card and just score against your piece of card going across there. And you would get those same, same little pieces. Okay, so that's the middle of ours. We now need four pieces for the panels cut at four and a quarter by two and three quarters. So let's see what this measures. It's four and a quarter and I need it to be two and three quarters. So I'm going to turn it round. So there's one. Ah, that's why I needed the rest of that card. You know that I put away and said, oh, that's a card base. It's not going to be a card base. It's going to be some of my panels. Right, two. This piece will be scrap. Let's get that card base back. So these... This is cut at four and a quarter, and I need two more cut at two and three quarters. One, two. Let's put that one away. Okay, so let's check. I've got everything now. I've got my inside tower piece, four and a quarter by four and a quarter, scored at one, two, three, and four. I've got four panels cut at four and a quarter by two and three quarters. Okay, and now I've got all those pieces ready. I'm going to do my stamping first. And then it just makes it easy to assemble. So I need one piece for the front and I need one piece for a sentiment. And I'm using my peach stamps. I'm going to use this piece the leaf piece and these little peaches and I'm going to make it a thank you card so um, no let's make it a happy birthday card actually I'm going to use the happy birthday I don't make too many spare birthday cards so let's make one right now I don't need any of the dies but I do need some stamp blocks so, Let's take off those leaves. Oops. Libby, you'll have to tell Richard where you are this week. It's, uh, he's around too this week. Okay, so there's the leaves. I want the peaches. Let's find another little block for these. Sentiment. So let's get that birthday sentiment. And I'm going to just pop it down on here and then put it onto this stamp. Okay. And I'm also going to use some of my smaller blocks. I'm 
going to get the little leaves, these teeny weeny, these, uh, where are they? These teeny weeny leaves here. I'm going to use those. So there it is there. And I want to use the flowers as well. So I'm going to get those flowers. Okay. So I think that's everything we need. Is that going to fit on here or do I need a bigger, a bigger stamp block maybe? Oh, no, that should be okay. So I'm going to do my big peach piece first. I'm going to find a piece of scrap. Oh, hi, Laurie. You found us. <laughs> okay, I'm making a pinwheel tower card, Laurie. And this is the base of how it works. Um, and I'm using my Sweet as a Peach stamp set and I'm using the You're a Peach designer series paper and all I've done so far is cut all my pieces and I'm just about to stamp so I'm going to use Old Olive for the leaves that I have here stamp it on here and because I want this to be the, the front of my card I can sort of put it on fairly low down I'm only going to leave a little space to put the happy birthday stamp okay and let me find my cleaning chamois because otherwise I'll end up dropping a piece of card or something on this stamp one away. Oh, do you know, I'm going to do my envelope as well. Sometimes I just forget to do the envelope at the same time, so I'm going to get my envelope out. Let's ink this up again. I was going to put design series paper on, but actually let's just, let's just stamp. There we go. I don't know why you were on YouTube either, Laurie, but we were on YouTube last night. So maybe, you know, because you were on YouTube last night for class, you just carried on being on there. But here we are, waiting for the snow. Uh, I was watching the weather today and it said that um, for Cochrane and probably you know, all of our area, uh, it was the mildest November on record for the last 20 years or something. Uh, it's been it's been such a lovely November with only a couple of cold days. Okay, now I've got my peaches. And I don't know if you can see. I don't know if that makes it any easier. There's like a little delve or a little dip on each of the peaches. And that's where it joins onto the... Um, the stems okay so when you're trying to work out where to put these that you put the two together here with the pointy um, the pointy peach pointing to the right and these little dips they they start on that part of the stem you see and they just fit in like that so, but let's ink it up I'm going to ink them up in pale papaya And then I'm going to sponge them. Now last night we had our card class uh, that Laurie was at as well and we were doing sponging. So I've still got my sponges out. I just have to find out where my, where my peach one is. Uh, where's it disappeared to? Oh, here it is. Okay. And I'm going to use my Calypso Coral. I have the, the names um, on my little sponge daubers, uh, which colour I've used them in. But you certainly don't have to have one for each colour. Okay, so we've got pale papaya on here. I'm just going to ink it up again, just in case it was drying. And then I'm going to use my sponge dauber. And I'm going to sponge on some of the peach. So as we look at it, for this one, I'm going to just dab, dab, dab with that orange. 
you can't see it particularly well at the moment and you know that's fine you don't have to be able to see it you just know it's there and this was a tip in the um, uh, the annual catalogue where this stamp set is and it showed you how to do this and I loved the tip so I'm going to pop this back on here and then I'm going to line up these peaches I just need to move it down a little bit and I'm sorry if you're, all you can see is my head and then can you see how when the when these peaches are now stamped, you've got like that two-tone colour. If you do it just with the pale papaya, it's very pretty. Let me show you just with the pale papaya. It's very, very pretty. But I love that little deeper orange on it as well. So... <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to do this on the envelope as well. So I'm just going to put it in the pale papaya. Then I'm going to get my little finger dauber. My little finger daubers are getting a workout this week from having our class last night for sponging. And then, and then this. Okay, so I'm just inking at the right hand side of each of the peaches as you look at them this way. And let's pop that on the envelope and again I'm just gonna sort of roughly line them up with where those stems are and there we are I think it's so pretty with that two-tone color now we don't need peaches anymore but I do still have a little bit of stamping to do so let's put that one down I'm going to stamp on this piece which is where I'm going to write my uh, little message but instead of the peaches, I'm going to use the flowers this time. So I'm going to put it again in that pale papaya and get my little finger dauber and just put a little dab of um, Calypso coral in the centre of each one of those. And then I'm just going to have this sort of in the corner. And it'll come out just like the peaches where you've got that little two-tone, a little deeper orange and a little... Um, so the Calypso Coral is the deeper orange and the Pale Papaya is the nice base. So we've finished with that one. I do need to pop a couple of leaves on here. So let's put that one down. Let's find our green again. Yeah, the contrast is nice, Libby, and it makes such a difference. See, if you've got your peaches that just look like that, or you've got peaches that look like this, that's so much more depth. Okay, so let's find that little teeny weeny leaf that I had and I'm just going to use these I don't want to take up too much of the paper because I'll be sort of putting my message on it so I thought we'd just put a little bit there let's put a few little leaves oops I dropped those there so I'm going to just go over them so nobody can tell that that's where I put it down and that's not where I really wanted it Nobody knows. Uh, let's put another one, one just on there. Okay, so that's going to be my little inside piece. And we don't need this green anymore. And pop that one away. And I'm going to do my sentiment in the balmy blue. And you probably think, you know, why is she choosing blue? Well, it's just because my base card is blue and all of the papers have this balmy blue in. But that way it just ties it all up together. So I've got my happy birthday sentiment. And I'm going to stamp this just at the very bottom of these peaches. Hope I can stamp in a straight line. Okay, not very, but it's it's okay. It's not terrible. <laughs> And let's find another little sentiment for this one. What else have we got? So we've got happy birthday. Let's do, it's your day. Let's see if we can find that. It's your day, there we go. Um, let's see, Laurie, you never tried to do it on the stamp. Oh, like the sponging onto the stamp. Yeah, it's, it's really easy to do. 
I didn't teach it last night because we were, um, I know you've sponged lots before, but we were just doing like a, a basic teaching class on it. But have a go at it. It's, uh, it's nice. You know, and you get this two-tone effect. Let's try and put this straight. I don't need that little piece at the moment. And we'll just put this on here. Okay. So we're finished with all the inks. I think we're ready to make our card. Let's just clean that one little stamp up. Libby, have you done any sponging? Uh, we were we had sponging class last night and we were sort of colouring in with the ink daubers and um, um, like making a background as well. But sponging is really easy. I don't like that wobbly one there. What time is it? Half past six. Mm. Let me do that one again. I really don't like that not being straight. So I've got another one of those. Just bear with me while I get those out again. It's um, it, it's just bothering me a little bit because it's not really straight. And it should have been. But it's only going to be fast now. Because you know what I'm doing now. So let's find the green. In fact, I'm going to put the happy birthday piece on first. Oh, I think you'd like it, Libby. You get some really cool effects and um, for not very much work. And it looks a bit different. I don't think I've got my last night's sponging things in front of me. Because I cleaned my table. I'll have, I'll have a look in a moment. I'm going to move this down and just do my... I know you can't see at the moment, but... That's a bit better. That's straighter look. Okay. So let's put our leaves on. Laurie made the most beautiful card last night where we'd um, sponged in different colours and she had like a vertical sentiment on it and it looked so pretty. It's a shame we can't show each other while we're on the Facebook Live. It really was pretty. Okay, well, let's get that pale papaya. Don't think this set's only for doing peaches either. I've made a couple of cards where it was um, the same same pieces, but I coloured them purple, so it looked almost like a damson or um, um, what I don't know. What do you call damsons here? Um, hmm, I can't just think what you call them, but it was it was really pretty and. Uh, you know, it, you, you don't have to just do peaches. And I've seen somebody else who did them almost like a crab apple red colour. And that was really pretty too. Uh, let me just try and line up these little bits. There we go. Okay, that's you. You're going in the bin. Gone. <laughs> okay, let's pop those away. That's much better. Was all over there. I don't need my sponge daubers anymore, so out of the way. Okay, so we've got our front of the card. We've got the little piece where we write our sentiments. We've got all our pieces of design series paper cut. We've got our envelope made and we're ready to assemble. So we'll go back to this piece that was the four and a quarter by four and a quarter, scored at one, two, three, four, and then you have this little quarter of an inch piece here. If you find that that's too narrow for um, joining it together and, and you'd like it a bit wider, just cut it at four and a quarter, but this one at four and a half, and that will give you a little bit more to work with. But it works perfectly though still. Okay, now let's fold that tiny piece in. I'm just going to go over with my bone folder so that I know these are going to lay flat. And this is just going to make like a little box or the little tower. And that little tiny quarter of an inch strip is going to, we're going to put glue on and it's going to close up that piece so that you get a box. 
and I'm going to put my tearing tape on. Now you can use wet glue and ordinarily I would but I just think it's it's a bit faster with tearing tape for when I'm doing my lives, that's all. Let's tear, tear that off. Yeah. Now you can see that the tearing tape is actually a little bit wider than the little piece that we're trying to adhere it to. So once you've taken that off, all I'm going to do is use my finger and run that piece back over. Okay. And then I'm going to fold it down. And here's, here's my little piece that's got an adhesive on. Let's go down there again. And then I'm going to fold the top piece just back onto it. It's much easier to do it this way rather than try to attach it while you've got it in your hand like this. Because sometimes you don't get this piece straight when you're sort of manipulating it with your hand. But now you know that that's going to lay flat. Yeah, I'm going to just go over all of my lines. Okay. And I use this as the back, but really there's not a back and not a front. It doesn't matter. Now, these little panels, you attach one to just every every side okay doesn't matter which one you start with so and you can that's where my seam is you can start it that way you can start it that way it really doesn't matter I'm just going to turn mine over and I'm going to put adhesive down here and I'm just going to start and put them on okay, so I've just turned it over so that I can just feel where it is and I know whereabouts to start putting these. Okay, so you can line it up either at the left or the right. I find mine easier to line up at the left. You just pop that straight on top, on the very edge. And I'm using wet glue, and the beauty of that is if it's not quite on straight, you've got a little bit of wiggle space. Okay. So that's our first one on. Okay. Now I'm just going to turn it over and I'm going to put the next one to here. So you just put adhesive on that side. That's the tower. Get your next piece. Put it on. Put it up to the edge. Make sure you don't put it so far over that this piece won't fold over like that. So make sure you've got a tiny little gap. If you push it up too far, then the, the pieces won't fold flat. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn it once more. Add a little bit more glue on here. Put the next piece on. And once you've got the first piece on, the rest go on really easily because you've got something to hold on to. Okay, I'm just going to smooth that down. Okay. Flip it over again and you'll have one more space. Just this is the last space for it to go on to. Put it straight on here. Okay, so now you've got yourself that little tower in the middle and the four pieces coming off, more like a windmill. Okay. And again, once you've got it flat, it will fit just in an ordinary envelope. It fits in there perfectly. So let's put our pieces on. Choose which one you want to have as your front piece. I found that sometimes there's one that just looks like it's attached better. So I, I sort of have a little look around. I know that's the back because I can see all of, that's where we uh, joined the tower together. So I don't want that piece. So I just, I just look and see which one I think looks the best. Okay, so I'm going to have mine this way. My front piece is going to be my one with the happy birthday. 
Now you could add dimensional rules and, and have this raised up a little bit, but I'm just going to glue it straight down. Yeah, I know, Laura, it's getting really loud around here. So it's noisy with the wind blowing through. I think it's bringing that snow. Okay, so that's going to be our front. Okay, I'm going to, I'm not going to do these inside pieces here yet. I'm going to do the bigger pieces. Okay, so I'm going to add that one here. And you can either add your um, piece for your sort of message. You can add it on the next one or you can add it on the last one. I am actually adding it on the next one. So I do make the, the front, then a designer series paper piece, then my message piece and then another designer series paper piece. And I just like that as the order. Okay, so I've got one space left for my other peach piece. Oh, did I stick that one upside down? No, I didn't. Just had a thought then that I might have put it on upside down. <laughs> put a little bit of glue down here. Laurie and Libby, have you got your catalogues yet? Um, mine came a couple of days ago, the the new mini catalogues. You should be getting them in the mail. So, Stampin' Up! send all demonstrators one to start with. So have a look out for that. Okay, so now we just need our narrower pieces. And I'm going to put this one in, but I don't know whether I'm going to put the floral one here. And then the stripey one here. Yeah, I think I am. I think I am. It's less busy. Okay. Okay, it'll be coming any day. Um, one of my friends in Edmonton, who is a demonstrator, she just got hers yesterday. I got mine, I think it was Friday. So they are they are out and about for delivery. Did you get yours, Laurie? Nope. Okay. Um I wonder why I've got mine then. Hmm, very strange. You'd think, you know, we'd get them in the same town, wouldn't you? Okay, so I've got floral, stripes, so the next one will be floral, and then stripes. stripe one. So there we are. That's the last one. Okay, and then there's our little pinwheel card. So when it's set out on the side, this is the piece that you know you'll see first. But then as you look round, you've got the little different little different pages almost. Now if you wanted to, you could also put more sentiments on if you use maybe, let's have a look in here, um, maybe one of the smaller, like this is from the Stitch So Sweetly, you could always add like another little sentiment on or sort of a piece on here. You could add little rhinestones on, you could put a little ribbon and a bow. So you can really dress it up as much as you want uh, and it's uh, no, it's an easy easy little thing to do I don't know why I've waited so long to make one uh, yeah it is cute I'm glad you like it Laurie and that that just that little bit of sponging I mean that makes it for me because it it is sort of more 3d almost looks like it's got more texture it looks more like a fuzzy little peach uh, so there we are that's the pinwheel tower card. I hope you'll have a go. And uh, thanks, Libby. Thanks. And I, like I was saying earlier, you don't have to put these pieces on. You could just put another piece of designer series paper on and you know, get yourself not this tiny one, 
but you know, stamp yourself a little sentiment. I know it's not a happy birthday. Oh, that one's too big anyway. But stamp yourself a little sentiment uh, and just put on a happy birthday or something. And I think this would be nice. I've still got some of the dinosaur paper that Stampin' Up! did a couple of years ago. Make a nice little children's card too. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to be doing Facebook Lives during December. Um, I'm going to have a couple of weeks off and I'm hoping to go back to the UK with the new variant and the new regulations at the moment I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'll be able to go back to the UK but I am going to try and go back for the celebration of my dad's life so the dimensions are here Laurie and Libby uh, thanks Laurie um, I'm not I'm not doing any classes in December and I'm not going to do my Facebook lives. Now, if I don't get to go to the UK, you might find that I pop on a couple of times just to talk to everybody. But uh, thank you for joining me all these weeks, everybody. It's When I started off, I wasn't quite sure how it was going to work because the technology seemed so difficult. But I think once you've done a couple of Facebook lives and it's a different um, thing every week, that goes wrong you start and not worry about it so I've been I've been having such fun on a Tuesday and once it gets back to January I will be back here on a Tuesday unless I don't go to the UK in which case I might be back in a couple of weeks but thanks so much for joining me everybody I really have appreciated it and it's been good to catch up with you every week I love crafting with you so it's it's always fun have a wonderful Christmas and a, a lovely time off, everybody. And I'll see you all really soon. Take care and thanks again. Bye-bye.